The Washington Post reports White House officials blocked a State Department intelligence agency from submitting written testimony on climate change to the House Intelligence Committee. The report warns of, quote, possibly catastrophic effects of climate change. One official reportedly said that the findings did not jive with the Trump administration's agenda. Joining me now is one of the writers of the Washington Post article, senior national affairs correspondent Juliet Eilprin. Juliet, what does the State Department's report really say about these implications of climate change? It paints a pretty stark picture of what could be happening in terms of both climate change in the coming decades and how that could pose a national security threat to the United States. So citing scientific evidence and findings by federal scientists, as well as those in academia across the world, it points to how fossil fuel emissions have been driving climate change and how, over time, what you could see happening is potential tipping points that could have major catastrophic shifts to the planet, whether it's melting of ice sheets, the die-off of coral reefs, uh, the release of a great deal of carbon that's currently frozen, and that this in time could cause abrupt changes, including water scarcity, thing, issues that would, for example, uh, lead to large migration shifts and and other changes that the the testimony outlines are things that the United States is aware of and and could contemplate coming coming to fruition in the future. So I'm curious, Julia, what did the White House have to say about these findings in this testimony? So publicly, they told us yesterday that they don't comment on internal reviews, but privately, what White House officials have said is that that it's the right of the White House to look at agency testimony when it's being submitted to Congress. This was, interestingly, in a public open session with the House Intelligence Committee. And so, as a result, it went through an interagency process that, for example, doesn't usually happen when you're doing closed-door testimony, when you have the briefing of an intelligence agency. And so the argument of these White House officials is that this, as you mentioned, didn't jive with the president's position and the position of the administration. And that's why they had particularly targeted the scientific findings in this testimony. And when the State Department agency uh, refused to take them out, they said that they would not be submitted, but they would allow an expert to testify in public. Yeah. You know, as you said, the State Department staffer was ultimately allowed to speak to a House committee, but the administration refused to approve his written testimony for the congressional record. You know, what, what's really their reasoning for blocking his analysis? Well, and it's also important to note that while obviously there was one individual whose name was on this, this was actually the broad conclusions of an entire department, the oldest civilian intelligence agency in the United States, which dates back to the 40s. And so this, this Bureau of Intelligence and Research within the State Department had come to these conclusions, and essentially the White House just did not want this part of the permanent record. This is something you might have, you know, uh, the Washington Post and other had certainly covered when you had Dan Coates, one of the top-ranking intelligence officials in the United States, submit testimony in January, which outlined the security threats linked to climate change. And so, simply, there was a decision on the part of the White House that they didn't want this full documentation as the official word of one of the 16 intelligence agencies of the United States on record with Congress that could be referred to over and over again. So how exactly does the State Department's information, it contradicts what the Trump administration has said about climate change? And for people who don't agree with the White House's approach, do you see any movement to satisfy folks who, who want more aggressive action on climate change? Well, in terms of the policy direction, that's absolutely being set by the president and some of his top deputies. And they're making a number of decisions that are aimed at either allowing for fossil fuel extraction that leads to increased greenhouse gas emissions or the rollback of, say, Obama-era policies that would curb that. So the policy direction from this White House is clear. They are not taking the same steps to restrict greenhouse gas emissions as we've seen in the past. Interestingly, as you note, what we are seeing on the part of both scientists as well as intelligence and military officials is many of these individuals are continuing to work on this issue 
even even despite the shift at the top. And so, for example, we do see the military taking sta steps to safeguard installations when it comes to some of these climate impacts, such as sea level rise. So, you know, there, what I would say is there's kind of a, a split between working to adapt to climate change impacts, that is continuing to happen under this administration, whereas the efforts to curb the driver of climate change are ones that are being scaled back. Mm, you know, so when you talk about scientists and groups who support climate change research, you know, how are they responding to this White House? They are quite critical. What we've certainly seen from both climate scientists across the country, as well as, for example, some of the folks who are at that intersection between national security and climate change, is the argument that just because the president does not accept the science does not mean that it's not ha that climate change is not happening and that it does not pose a risk to the United States. And so there's certainly pushback in that sense, but those are not necessarily messages that are swaying the White House or this administration more broadly in terms of the policies it would like to pursue, since they're arguing that, for example, pursuing energy production is far more important than adjusting it in light of some of these conclusions. Juliet Eilprin with The Washington Post. Juliet, thank you very much. Thank you, Rena.